feel that. the show for younger gamers by gamers. I'm Hex, bass guitar. And I'm Banjo, lead guitar. <laughs> and I am Darren, lead singer, band manager and creative genius. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've been rocking and rolling all week with a brand new game. We use a real guitar and it's called Rocksmith. It's been the perfect game to rehearse with for our first ever gig as Darren and the New Bats. <coughs> um, Darren, I think you'll find we agreed at the band meeting to call it the Rolling Barjos. Negative. Um, I don't think either of those band names sound particularly good, to be honest. But you know what? We have until the end of the show to decide because that's when you've booked our gig, right, Darren? Uh, affirmative. Oh, I can't wait to be up there on the stage with hundreds and hundreds of people wanting to hear our amazing music and the lights. Oh, yeah, oh. crowd surfing, all that cool rock oh. and roll stuff. Uh, but we should get to the first review because I'd hate to be late. Yeah, affirmative. <laughs> Retrograde is a rhythm game like no other because all the action plays out in reverse. The game actually begins at the end. You defeat the final boss, the credits roll, and for a moment you're left thinking, shortest game ever? But then, disaster. The explosion that killed the final boss has also warped the space-time continuum and set time running backwards. To save the universe, you must undo all the damage that you've done to the fabric of reality. And that means unfiring every laser you've ever shot. <gasps> Retrograde belongs to the bullet hell subgenre of shoot 'em ups. The screen is chock full of bullets that often seem impossible to avoid. Yet, compared to a traditional shooter, you have very little freedom of movement. You can only jump between certain fixed vertical positions. With this limited mobility, you must dodge enemy bullets as they approach from the left and line up with your own bullets as they flow in from the right, tapping fire to unfire them at just the right moment. You also have to mash fire to suck in your rocket barrages and hold down fire to absorb your beams. And if you miss a few shots, scary dark energy will start to leak out of your ship. It seems simple, but it can get so frantic. Just as well you have a few tricks up your sleeve. Collect an oscillation over thruster and you can trigger a flurry of bonus points. It also makes the colours way more intense, which makes things a bit easier. And if you stuff up, you can simply rewind time to undo your mistakes. Would it be more correct to say that you're re-rewinding time to un-undo your miss mistakes? I think so. And while we're on the topic, Darren, have you made any efforts to undo your time travel disasters? Well, we've discussed this, Barjo. If the dinosaurs were still alive today, the amount of excrement... Small price to pay, Darren. Small um, price um, to pay. Guys, I think I'd just rather talk about the music, if that's okay. Okay. Not dinosaur poo. All right. The music is really, really good. These space-age techno tunes seem to have the whole universe in their thrall. Some planets are built entirely out of graphic equalizers. Even the hero, Rick Rocket, bobs his head non-stop. It's adorable. Just like a regular music game, you can control all the action with a standard guitar controller. You're not expected to, though. Retrograde has been optimised to work just as well with a normal controller. The controls are simple, but this is not a casual game by any means. Things get pretty intense even on beginner, and there are five higher difficulty levels on top of that, and the challenge stages are just bonkers. But we should wrap this up. It's different, it's challenging, and it defies expectations, so I'm giving it seven and a half out of ten rubber chickens. It's eight rubber chickens from me. All right, well, I'm gonna go rock the news. OK. Uh, hurry, because we've got our gig, don't forget. We can't be late. Affirmative. Uh, be careful not to rock out. Too much. You can Too rock out a little bit. You can rock out a little bit. But save some of the rock for the gig. Affirmative. Just tuning. Me. Time for the news. Minecraft developer Mojang has announced a joint project with the United Nations titled Block by Block. The project aims to get young people involved in urban planning by allowing them to share their visions for the future of cities and urban spaces. The three-year partnership aims to upgrade 300 public spaces by the year 2016. A pilot project is currently underway to plan the future of Kybera, a settlement near Nairobi. Gamer Jamie Colliver has spent six months recreating the role-playing game Final Fantasy VII using only Little Big Planet 2's level creator. 
The remake retells the entirety of the epic RPG's story and includes the game's characters, bosses, music and conversations. <laughs> Breaking news here from Darren. American robotics company Boston Dynamic has unveiled their latest robot dubbed the Cheetah. The speedy robot is able to run at 45.5 kilometers per hour, which Darren has pointed out is slightly faster than the world's fastest man, Usain Bolt, whose fastest recorded speeds reach just 44.7 kilometers per hour. <laughs> That's new. Okay, Darren, we know you've been working on a new segment for the show, so it's time to spill the beans. Yes, and if it's cooking with Darren or Darren reads calculus, I'm going home. Those are both good ideas, Barjo, but no, it's time for me to proudly introduce Darren Does Devs. What? Like game developers? Affirmative. As you know, I've been cultivating a special rapport with some of the greatest minds in video game design the world over. So I thought it was only fair to share these amazing meetings with all the spawnlings out there. Welcome to Darren Does Devs. Now, before we begin, I must scan our guest for noobishness to make sure he's worthy of being interviewed by me. Scanning, scanning. Ah, excellent. You're completely new bite free. Now, firstly, tell the Spawnlings who you are and what you do. Well, I'm Randy Pitchford, and I run a studio called Gearbox Software, and we make video games. Oh, oh, oh. Well, I understand that one of your favorite game genres are roguelikes. Now, many yes. of the Spawnlings might not be familiar with that. Uh, could you tell them what a roguelike is and what makes them so special? Yeah, well, uh, there was a game called Rogue, which basically uh, involved you becoming uh, an adventurer, and you'd go into a dungeon and defeat horrible monsters like dragons and orcs, and find find a uh, loot and you'd gear up and become more powerful and going deeper into the deeper the dungeon you get more and more uh, enemies to face and better stuff to get and it's it's just kind of a fun adventure so the games came to life purely in your imagination. Yeah, a lot of we had to use a lot of imagination back then before we had graphics. But uh, you know, now uh, brilliant artists and great engineers are capable of making things on screen that look almost as interesting as real life. Today, I'd like to pitch an idea to you. I have oh, for a game. Um, uh, please, please, please. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> okay. The idea I had for a game was that it would be set in a factory, and the idea would be to replace the human workers with more robots to make the factory more efficient. Now, what advice would you give me for? developing and refining that concept. I think if you want to make a game out of that, you're going to need resources, and you're going to need um, challenges, uh, and you're going to need rewards. So you have to decide what, I what it is that the factory's trying to build, or what are the options for what it's trying to build, and what it takes to build them, and then what kind of management is required in order to uh, go through that process. And if you succeed, if you do a good job, if you're efficient, if you use your resources well and create the things that are required, uh, then you'll need some kind of reward system in your video game, and then it'll feel fun. <clears throat> I knew that already, of course. Of course you did. But I, I just thought I'd get your, your opinion. OK, OK. <laughs> now, I get many thousands and thousands of emails and letters from the Spawn of Australia uh, asking about how they could go about getting jobs in the world of video games. Mm, mm. Now, could you give some advice about what they might want to study at school and what sort of uh, things they should do to move in that direction? What's really awesome about making video games is it's, it's one of the only industries in the world where there's uh, there's a component which is deeply scientific, where where studying math and programming and science is really helpful to 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 the skills that we use. But there's another component which is definitely about feeling. It's about heart and and studying art and creativity and and committing to your creativity really is a benefit. And and finding a way to blend both both the science aspect and the artistic aspect together is where the best games come from. So anyone who wants to become a game maker can either commit themselves to artistic endeavors creative endeavors, or scientific and mathematical endeavors, and that's a great place to start. The key, though, the key is to follow your passion and to never give up. Would you like to sing a little wub wub with me? Oh, sure. Um, wub wub. <laughs> wub wub. Come on, join in. <laughs> How about, wub, have wub. you ever, did you see our other trailer uh, with the lion sleeps tonight? Did you see oh, that one? Oh, you know yes, that song? Oh, yes. Uh, how does that go again? It's the Weem Away song, you know. Like, a Weem Away, 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 a Weem Away. In the jungle, the mighty jungle, the lion sleeps tonight. <laughs> Yes. Oh, Not oh, bad. Oh, you have quite a voice. Oh, oh, oh. oh thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I, I knew that already. 
Well, uh, uh, thank you very much for your time, Randy. Uh, would you like uh, me to give you a rocket ride back to Texas? Oh, can you? Affirmative. That would be amazing. That would be amazing. Oh, uh, uh, just be sure to hold your breath, because we do leave the atmosphere briefly. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. Come on. Okay. <clears throat> Charging my rocket boots. <laughs> Off we go. believe you spoke to a famous developer like Randy Pitchford and didn't tell us. Uh, yeah, we could have asked him some questions. Like, proper questions. Uh, please tell me you at least delivered him home safely. Well, that's another story. Darren, what did you do to Randy Pitchford? Darren! Uh, uh, well, I think he slipped off somewhere over the Pacific Ocean, but he looked like a strong swimmer. I I'm sure he's back at Gearbox by now, working on some new games or something. Uh, Bajo, we better call him and check right away. Uh, let's go to the Asgood Game Desk. <laughs> I'm sure he's fine. You're worrying over nothing. Right. So he made it home eventually. And he's and he's fully recovered now. Okay. Good. <laughs> well, well uh, thank you. And I'm sorry again about that. Sorry. Okay, bye. Is Randy okay? Well, yeah, sort of. I just I don't think he's going to come back to Australia anytime soon. Right. Well, we're going to have to put a stop to Darren Dove's devs. Agreed. Yes. Well, shall we get on with some questions? Certainly, Hex. Whew. Load up the question machine. Okay, well, uh, we're going to start with this one from Rhett uh, in Tiaro, Queensland. Hi, Good Game SP, from Batman. I was wondering what would happen if I put a 3DS chip into a DSi XL. Could you please tell me? P.S. And Darren is a big noob! Good to hear from you again, Batman, and we won't tell anyone that your name is Rhett. If you actually managed to get a 3DS chip into a DSi XL, you'd probably either break the chip or the DS, so we wouldn't recommend trying. Yeah, but you'd have to try pretty hard to get it in, since 3DS games actually have this little extra bit of plastic that'll stop them from going into an older DS, so you can't just accidentally put one in there. But of course, you can put and play DS games into a 3DS, since they fit in there just fine. Easy. So, let's move on to this one from Steve uh, in Minecraft here. What are mods? I play Minecraft and they get brought up in conversations all the time, but I don't know what they are. Thanks for answering, Steve. Me. Ah, uh, well, Steve. Who could that be, Hex? We're talking about Minecraft. Who is, who's going to call us about while well, we're trying to talk about Minecraft? Hello. Well, Steve. Oh, it's Darren. The word, is, the word mod is short for modification, and they're basically add-ons for games that modify them in some way. Yeah, thanks, Darren. We've got this, though. You know, we know we know about Minecraft too. We can answer the Minecraft-related questions. You don't have to help out all the time, you know. There's a wide range of mods around. Some Didn't might just me. change one little bit of a game, like putting a gun or a dragon you can fly into Minecraft, for example. The game is still mostly the same, but it's been modified to add something you wouldn't get in the standard version. Darren, stop stealing our questions. Yeah, it's not the Darren show. And then there are things like texture packs, which can modify the graphics of the game and make it look better or just different. While some mods can take a game and change it so it's almost a completely different game. For example, there's a mod which makes Minecraft 2D, or one that lets you create your own adventures. Mostly mods are only available for PCs, however, as you need access to the game's yeah, files. Okay, 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 Darren, thank you very much for your help, but shouldn't you be loading the van? I mean, we've got a show to put on. You need to be a roadie. Get the stuff going. Quick, Darren! Quick, Darren, get the stuff going! Quick! <sighs> Brody, right. nice one. <laughs> yeah, hopefully that'll keep him busy for a bit. <clears throat> okay, uh, well, next up we've got this one from Jude, uh, who is in Mullumbimby, uh, New South Wales. I can say that one, and I like saying it because it's fun to say. Mullumbimby. It's fun to say. GGSP, is Zelda a boy or a girl? Jude. Well, Jude, it's a common misunderstanding to think that the main character in Zelda games is actually called Zelda, but... That's wrong. Yeah, you always play as Link, who is a boy. Zelda is actually the princess that Link is usually fighting to save. And of course, being a princess, she is a girl. So yes, Zelda is a girl, but Link is a boy. Easy enough. Well, uh, moving on to this one from Hunger Games winner in Brisbane, which is in the ACT, apparently. I thought Brisbane was in Queensland. Brisbane, Queensland. Well, there's a Brisbane street or a Bis Brisbane Avenue, maybe, uh, in Canberra. Did so you that, know that, that there's, there's a Batman Lane in Melbourne? I did know that, actually. Yeah? Have you been to Batman Lane? I have. Did, I, I did didn't you see Batman? No. Dear Good Game, I love your show a lot and really need help with this two questions. One, is there going to be a Hunger Games game for PS3 or Wii or 3DS? Two, on Minecraft, how do you mine Diamond without it breaking? Please answer or I am going to become a mega fail noob! PS, Bajo, you rock! 
Hex, you awesome. And Darren, you are the worst gamer ever. <laughs> Well, sorry to say Hunger Games winner, but at the moment there's no announced Hunger Games game coming out on any of those platforms. But the movie studio that made the film said that making a video game for it would be a no-brainer. So chances are it might come out on something at some point. So fingers crossed. Hmm. Uh, uh, hello. Who's that, Hex? Technically, there oh, are already Darren. two Hunger Games games out at the moment. There's the Hunger Games Adventure, which is a free-to-play browser game, and the Hunger Games Girl on Fire for mobiles. But we haven't really played them, so we can't say how useful, good they are. Useful, have, yes, yes, useful information, you. Darren. Thank thanks. you so much, Darren. Yeah. Oh, they're awesome, they're awesome guys. We haven't played them, though. We haven't played them. As for mining diamond, you need to use a pickaxe made from iron or diamond to actually get any diamond ore from a diamond block. If you use a cobble pickaxe, you'll just break it and get nothing. But moving on now to this one from DJ Kid in Cool Town, Queensland. Hi, this is my first time asking a question. So here is my question. Will pocket planes be ported to Android? Hex is awesome! And Baja was cool. Darren should go to the Darren Cave and stay there. Ah! <laughs> ah! Hex, why did you say I'm cool in such a quiet voice? It's because it's you explained balance. this yourself. This is, we're a fair that when show. you say awesome, you're like, yeah, awesome. Yeah. When you say cool, you're like, cool. Yeah, but you didn't do it that way. You just went, but it's cool. But it's more like, but it's cool. You That's know, not the it... way you said it when it was mine. Yeah, well, it's a matter of opinion. Well, thanks, DJ Kid, but we're happy to say that, yes, Pocket Planes is indeed coming out for Android devices. But, sadly, they haven't confirmed any release date for it, so we have no idea when it'll be coming out. It could be tomorrow, it could be months away... But hopefully it's sooner rather than later. Yes, uh, but we've got time for just one more today, so I thought we could have a look at this one from... Ah, Minecraft Maniac in Minecraft City in Victoria. Gee, I wonder if this question's gonna be about Minecraft. Yeah, I wonder. <laughs> I bet it is. Hey, good game. I am getting an Xbox 360 with Kinect, and I'm wondering which games you like best for Kinect that is less, and I mean less, than MA15+. Plus. Thanks. P.S. I will ask until I get my own... Well, what do you know? It wasn't about Minecraft at all. Yeah. Well, Minecraft Maniac, so far one of my favourite Kinect games has been Child of Eden. The motion controls were just, they worked really well and it was a stunning game to look at and play. And I would highly recommend the Dance Central games as well if you like a bit of dancing, which uh, I do. Child of Eden, it's like you're shooting lasers out of your hands. Yeah, and Dance oh, Central yeah. Now I know how Darren feels. You from, you know, a, a moderate to poor dancer into yeah. an amazing dancer. Yeah, I can yeah. completely relate to that. I really liked Fruit Ninja Connect, to be honest. I mean, it's, it's just fun chopping through fruit like a ninja. Also, as if I'm messing around in Double Fine Happy Action Theatre, it isn't really a game and more like a bunch of silly things to do with Kinect, but it's good for a laugh. And they're both arcade games, so you need to download those from the marketplace. Other than that, the Kinect sports games are decent fun to play with a few friends, but they're kind of dull to play by yourself. Mm. The Gunstringer was okay, I suppose, and we had a bit of fun with Kinect Russia Disney Pixar Adventure. And Connectables is pretty good for younger spawnlings too, especially if you like animals. Mm -hmm. And really, that's about it. Honestly, there haven't been many Kinect games that I'd recommend with, like, a massive amount of passion, but there's a decent variety there to dip your feet into. Well, I guess on that note, we're out of time for this week. As always, if you'd like to ask us something, then you can do just that by going here and uh, sending us your questions. Send them in. Now, back to the studio. Okay. Quick. Oh, it's going to be awesome. All the beach badges. I don't want to go to the beach, the though. beach badges. Yeah. I was thinking we could call ourselves Hexagonal. Yeah, it'd be a great name for a... <coughs> Yeah. It's time for our last rehearsal before the big gig. Ooh, right, let's get on with it. <coughs> We've had plenty of music rhythm games, but while faking it on a plastic instrument is fun, it can never really match up to playing a real guitar. Using a specially designed jack to USB cable that comes with the game, you can take any electric guitar or bass and plug it straight into your console. Your TV or home stereo instantly becomes an amplifier. Guys, with games like Guitar Hero and Rock Band, it was just about hitting the right coloured buttons at the right time. Here, actually playing a real guitar is quite intimidating. We all know I play the harp, so I was thinking my harp skills would, would translate, but unfortunately... Well, it's a good thing I was here, because obviously I can play the guitar awesome. this game does, it can actually teach you how to play guitar if you're willing to put in the time and the effort and the patience, but it's not easy. Affirmative. It teaches you how to hold a pick, 
how to tune, and the game has a dynamic difficulty system, so I'll start with a single easy to play root notes and progress to expert complexity. As you do better, the guitar parts become harder. It's definitely confusing at first, trying to decipher the on-screen note highway. Each string on the guitar is represented by a different colour, and you have to read the numbering of the frets too. Plus, the camera slides up and down the neck as the tune changes, which can really throw you off. Yeah, even for a guitarist, it takes a while to get used to, because you're looking at the TV, then you're looking at your guitar, then back, and... Mm. The Rocksmith career mode is called the Journey, but I don't think it's quite as fun as the career path in Rock Band or Guitar Hero. That's because this is a more serious game overall. Instead of basking in the glory of being an instant rock god, here you have to follow a careful routine of practice, play through the same songs until you earn enough points to progress. From the perspective of someone who can't really play the guitar, I would view this more as an interactive guitar learning tool than a game. So if you're not really interested in actually learning how to play the guitar, there's no real reason to pick this up, is there? If you are a guitar whiz, you'll begin to unlock virtual effects pedals, guitar types and amps to play with as a reward. These are good fun to muck around with in the free play mode. Mixing and matching effects can produce some crazy sounds. <laughs> I like that the game presets the effects for each song, so what you're playing actually sounds like it does in the recording. The game also supports bass guitar, so if you want to swing to the subs of four strings, you can do that too. Well, I think Rocksmith is definitely capable of teaching someone who's never played before how to play a real guitar, but you've got to have that patience. As a bit of a guitar noob, I find it hard to score this as a game, but, you know, I can see the potential in it, so I'm giving it 7.5 out of 10 rubber chickens. It's a bit of a hybrid between a game and a teaching tool, isn't it? So, from the perspective of someone who can play a little bit, I feel like this could make me play a little bit better, so I'm giving it 8 out of 10. All right, you guys, I don't think we could be any more prepared for our gig. Darren? Oh, I'm pumped. Have you booked the venue, Darren? Have they got their list of requests that we sent? You know, we don't want any licorice jelly beans. We want lots of bottles of water, Very but already important. opened. Very important yeah. rock star yeah. request. Uh, uh, well, I've got the council permit. All right, you ready, guys? Yeah. One, two, Mushroom. three. Mushroom. I, d I go one, two, three, four, and then yeah. you come in. One, two, three, go. No, one, two, three, yeah. four, then we all start yeah. together. Yeah, catch up. One, two, three, four. No, you did it again. Like, if we're going to work as a band, we have to play together as a band. This isn't the Bajo show. Maybe maybe okay. if you knew how to, one, how to two, mushroom. Three. Catch up. With, With a wyvern on the top. Mushroom. Darren, busking on the street isn't exactly what I would call a glamorous debut. Ah, oh, it's all about the exposure, Hex. Yes, well, I think we can all agree in the future not to let Darren plan any more gigs. Well, at least how much money did we make? Ooh. Ooh. Mm, about 15 cents and some rubbish and a bulldog clip and some chewing gum. Ew. Oh, all great acts have to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. Well, next time, let's start indoors because someone threw a sandwich at my face. Mm -hmm.